Liberty Media, I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. With Joe Biden officially out of the race and Kamala Harris stepping up as his replacement as the presumptive Democratic nominee for president, liberal media commentators are suddenly interested in talking about age and mental fitness after ignoring those concerns about Biden for virtually his entire time in office. Let's watch. We have work to do. And so I'm gonna be on the phone tonight calling delegates, um, getting them, whipping them up, trying to get them on board for Kamala Harris. I don't think that's gonna be a, a, a difficult task. In anything else the vice president uh, needs to do, I'll be there because right now Kamala Harris has her work cut out for her. She's running against the oldest uh, nominee for president of the United States in American history. And so when you have this type of change election, when you have this type of generational divide that you have, it's a question of whether or not you wanna go backwards with Donald Trump or forward with Kamala Harris. I mean, the man is nearly 80 years old. And so the question is, can he serve another four years? I'm not sure he can. It may have been Teddy White who was looking at JFK uh, from behind when he was president. He said, oh, my God, a young man's hair. You see Kamala Harris and you go, oh, my God, hair. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like, what? This race has just radically changed because whether you're Democratic or a Republican, so many people have said, why is everybody so <laughs> old that's running for president of the United States? And you look at Kamala Harris and it's like, it's a dramatic difference. Bakari Sellers, of course, is the same commentator who was going off on David Axelrod just two weeks ago for suggesting that Biden leave the race because of his obvious cognitive decline. Now he has conveniently put in his own spin to now make age a problem with former President Donald Trump, which I think fundamentally still misunderstands the problem that so many voters had with Joe Biden, which is not just that he's old, but that he has demonstrated repeatedly that he was not fit for the job mentally. Yeah, it is shameless for right. them to lean into this narrative now. It, it makes me think of what, what's the NPC meme where uh, you know, they, the disc gets removed from their brain and they put a new one in. It's like, <laughs> now it's okay to talk about age in terms of the presidential contest. But yes, it's exactly that. It's. It's not, I mean, the, the concerns about Biden were tied to his age because he is the oldest person ever to be president, to seek the presidency again. Um, but like, there are people older than him. I, Bernie Sanders is, I, I think, a year older than him or about the same age. And while I, I don't want Bernie Sanders to be president because I, I disagree with his policies, I don't like, I, I don't have a concern about his you know, mental acuity or for, he's, he's in good shape and health for his age. He hasn't like slowed down in terms of his talking. He knows what he's saying. I disagree with it, but that's different than the Biden situation where you can see a clear market decline over his time in office and especially over the last couple of months or he was held back from us. I, I don't know when this, this drop began, whether it was six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, because he's been so sheltered. Um, but that, you know, Trump is also very old, uh, that, like that's true. And I think you can see maybe a little bit of decline, possibly if you really squint at it, but mostly he just sounds the way he's always sounded. He didn't even look that different at the end of his term in office, unlike every president who precedes him. You see the before and after pictures for like, you know, Obama and George W. Bush and Bill Clinton, they look like markedly made weary by their time in office. Trump looks basically the same. Yeah, I was actually watching uh, a YouTube video that just came out where Bryson DeChambeau, who's a live golfer and former PGA Tour member, played a full 18 holes of golf with former President Donald Trump. And I gotta say, he looks pretty mm -hmm. good. He's a legitimately good golfer. He has the old man swing, of course, with the sort of shortened backswing. But I think that's a pretty decent test as to what kind of shape someone's in, if they can walk 18 holes of golf or play 18 holes of golf. But I mean, even getting back to what Joe Scarborough is saying there with, this is a generational change that they have to get used to, or perhaps that was Bakari that was saying that, I, they're all sort of lashing on to this generational issue. Uh, I, I suppose that's the only differentiating factor that they have between Kamala and Biden, because the reality is she's going to have to answer for the Biden administration's record, regardless of the fact that Biden has left. She is a part of the administration. She has some responsibility for the policies that have been enacted that voters don't like 
feel has affected their lives negatively, especially when compared to the four years of the Trump administration. Uh, so you can't just divorce yourself from Biden only because he's stepped aside now. For one, he's still the president, you're still his vice president, and you were presiding over the past three and a half years of policy change. Yeah, look, I understand why uh, the Democrats are a little bit excited right now to some degree because, you know, we were all kind of dreading this rematch, right? It was just boring. Biden versus Trump again. Um, it, it was, it didn't, there was not a lot of dynamism in this race. And now something dramatic has happened. Biden has been switched with Kamala Harris. We're gonna talk a little bit more in a minute about how that actually all went down. But, and, and Kamala Harris, you know, is going to, even though her, if her policies are substantially the same as Biden's, I agree, she is part of the same administration. And to some extent, if she departs from him on policy, I think it's in ways that are worse mm -hmm. and are going to be make her less electable in these pivotal Midwestern swing states. You know, she's more for banning fracking. She's more on board with the Green New Deal, with subsidizing green energy, all of these kinds of uh, um, uh, government uh, backed and enforced environmental mandates that are just, I don't think gonna play well at all in Pennsylvania and Michigan, et cetera, but we'll see. However, you know, she's going, if there is a debate, she's going to be able to debate Donald She'll Trump be better, do than, <laughs> better than Joe Biden <laughs> in this moment. Although of course we always have to keep in mind, the thing you knew about Kamala Harris, if you knew who she was, was that she talked in these kinds of she was not a gifted communicator. She talks in a very vague, you know, we make fun of her. That's what she's known for is these very um, sort of circular, circuitous statements where she's not really saying enough. There's a reason people compare her to Selena Meyer from Veep, which is, you know, now she's still a better communicator than Joe Biden right now, but that was only that's only become true in the last three months. Prior to that, everyone thought she was a less effective communicator and that she was a less popular political figure than he was. I, I grant that that has changed as of late in the wake of Biden's debate performance, but this is not someone with like a long track record of being known for effective communicating or being well liked in politics in general. Right, I think the Democrats are looking at this from the perspective of it couldn't really get much worse than yeah. Joe Biden. And there is a potential upside with yeah. anyone from the party replacing and, Biden. And, and they're right, I grant that right. it's possible, yes. But, <laughs> But yeah. Kamala has not campaigned yet. And yeah. what we learned in 2020 is that when she campaigns, people dislike her immediately and vociferously. I mean, it was only the second Democratic debate where she got thoroughly dismantled by Tulsi Gabbard on the issue of criminal justice reform and ended up suspending her campaign before even making it to Iowa, even though she was sort of the Democratic darling. She was one of the favorites of the DNC um, and just flamed out spectacularly. So I think perhaps the Democrats have kind of memory hold just how bad of a candidate that she is and give it maybe two weeks and they're going to be, I think maybe kicking themselves that this was the best that they could do. Yeah, on uh, on you know criminal justice stuff, Elizabeth Nolan Brown, a reason has done some reporting on uh, Kamala Harris's past as, as a prosecutor in California, um, you know, being militant on things like, you know, not just things where most people do want, you know, except for us weird libertarians, you know, greater enforcement. Of, I mean, even libertarians, including myself, want greater enforcement of ac against actual violence and theft and you know awful things going on in the streets of many major cities, but she was known for enforcing like truancy laws. Mm -hmm. She wanted you know lock up parents for kids not showing up for uh, for school. Was was militant about things that maybe you don't necessarily want uh, police uh, a, a heavier police presence for, and then ended up you know, backing away totally in an insincere fashion from uh, actual uh, crime enforcement type stuff when uh, Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and all of that stuff happens, you know, running, I think, in a totally fake and inconsistent with her personal persona sort of way uh, against that. Um, it, it leaves you wondering what she stands for. Does she actually stand for anything? And if the answer is no, then how is she gonna get people excited about her candidacy, except in the narrowest possible way that, well, she is, you know, 80 years younger than everyone else in our government, um, which is an indictment of the government, not so much a credit to her. Indeed, and every ad that I've seen so far from the Harris Victory Fund has been an anti-Trump or anti-Project 2025 attack ad, which is the precise playbook of Joe Biden. So yeah. she's not, going to be an inspiring candidate by any means. She doesn't have a, a platform to run on besides what the Biden administration has done that has 
in many ways destroyed this country um, in the minds of voters. And so I don't see really any net benefit for the Democrats here besides, as mm -hmm. you said, the, the age issue yeah. perhaps being nullified. Well, we've got a lot more scrutiny of Kamala Harris coming up. Stick around for more free media.